Hello. In addition to other diagnoses, the hospitalist gave a severe malnutrition diagnosis. So at this point, the patient needs to be seen by a registered dietitian. The patient is NPO, and at this point, he had generalized fecal peritonitis. So his peritoneal cavity was infected because of feces, and the IV antibiotics will be continued to combat that. The patient also has an acute kidney injury with elevated creatinine due to sepsis. On January 16th, it was the second day post-surgery and the NG tube continued to have bilious output overnight. On this day, the patient had a BUN of 55 and a creatinine of 1.1. The patient's albumin was low at 2.5, which is a marker, uh, once again, a marker for malnutrition as well as inflammation. So it would be a bit hard to decipher whether or not this low albumin continued to be present due to his severe malnutrition or from the infection or both. In this case, it was likely due to inflammation post-surgery, but also due to his malnutrition. He also had a low hemoglobin of 6.2. The leukocytosis resolved and the acute renal failure continued to improve. So his creatinine start, started trending downwards at this point. Post-surgical report states that MPO should continue and that the patient may have ice chips and that the NG tube that was in place needs to stay in place. The, on the 18th of January, the NG tube continued to be in place, and this was post-op day four. The patient had a total of 1,800 mil of gastric contents suctioned the previous day, so on the 17th. The morning lab showed hyponatremia with a sodium of 160. The patient had not been getting out of bed at this point, very little movement. His bowel sounds are very diminished per the post-op follow-up. And on the 19th of January, the dietitian was consulted. The patient stated that he feels bad, he's in pain, and he does not want to move because of the pain. He is unable to articulate his health status prior to admission, so it's unknown what his prior um, nutrient and medical situ what his nutrient and medical situation was before he got the appendicitis and the ruptured appendix and this acute kidney injury. The estimated calorie needs that the patient had at this time were 2,200 to 2,500 kilocalories per day. And this is the BEE times 1.3 to 1.5 kilocalories divided by 75 per 75 kilograms admission weight. So the reason for these elevated caloric needs are because he needs to have nutrition in order to heal his surgical wounds and heal his body. His estimated protein needs are 75 to 112 grams of protein per day, and that is based on 1 to 1 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram for his 75 kilograms of admission weight. On the same day, his estimated fluid needs were 2,200 to 2,500 milliliters of fluid per day, and that's one milliliter per kilocalorie. So his fluid needs matched his calorie needs. 
the patient's nutritional intake meets less than 25% of his estimated calorie needs at this time. And at this time, the patient was diagnosed with moderate protein calorie malnutrition by the dietitian. His BMI is 22. His height is 182.9 centimeters and his weight was 74.84 kilograms. The evidence for this diagnosis of moderate protein calorie malnutrition is over five days with less than 50% of the nutrient needs met, the recent GI surgical intervention, as well as poor wound healing and these chronic non-healing wounds on his legs. The PES statement for the initial dietitian um, intervention was moderate acute disease or injury, related malnutrition, related to recent surgical intervention for perforated appendix, continued gastric output, chronic wounds, as evidenced by the medical record, nursing report, and patient interview. So for the nutrition intervention, we, the dietitian recommended beginning TPN number one at one half strength on the first day. So for this hospital, the lower amount of TPN is TPN number one and the higher amount of TPN is considered TPN number two. So this was the lower TPN starting at half strength to see if the patient tolerated it well because he had been so malnourished, it wouldn't make sense to start him on the full TPN number one. And for the nutrition intervention, the plan was to monitor for tolerance and change in status. The current parenteral feeding provides 1040 calories and 50 grams of protein. And then TPN number two, which they hoped at this point to bump the patient up to after TPN number one. Um, the TPN number two provides 1750 kilocalories, 10 grams of protein, no, 100 grams of protein and that is, that's for the higher strength TPN. His current nutritional intake on the 19th of January meets less than 50% of his estimated calorie needs and less than 75% of his estimated protein needs and an unknown percent estimate of fluid needs. The monitoring and evaluation and goals for from the dietitian for this patient was to tolerate parenteral feeding within 24 to 48 hours at that starting at that TPN number one half strength. And the second goal was to have nutrient intake meet over 75% of estimated needs in 24 to 48 hours. And the third nutrition goal is to promote wound healing throughout the length of stay. The next follow-up from the dietitian was on the 21st of January. And this follow-up nutrition assessment showed that the patient was sitting up in his chair. He's continuing to complain of abdominal discomfort. He has had some clear liquids, so a clear liquid diet, and he is tolerating it at this point. So at this point, the patient was switched to a clear liquid diet and his estimated calorie needs were unchanged from what we discussed earlier in the presentation. His TPN number two at this point 
So at this point, the patient was receiving the full strength TPN number two, which provides 1750 calories and 100 grams of protein, which this high protein would be important for promoting wound healing for both the surgical wounds and the leg wounds. And his, so his nutritional intake met over 75% of the estimated calorie needs, over 75% of the estimated protein needs, and over 75% of the estimated fluid needs. The plan at this time was to follow up in 48 to 72 hours and monitor for tolerance of his PO diet, the clear liquid diet. The next nutrition assessment was on the 27th of January. The patient is at this point post-op day two from a second exploratory laparotomy. He is on TPN again at this point and tolerating with an MPO status. So the patient at this point on the 27th was not on a clear liquid diet. So he was, had the second surgery, an exploratory laparotomy, and um, was put, continued on TPN. So his diet was MPO, his estimated needs were unchanged from previous, and TPN number two provides 1750 calories, 100 grams of protein, and this met over 75% of his estimated calorie protein, and fluid needs. For the assessment and plan, the nutrition diagnosis remained appropriate according to the initial assessment, and the intervention would be to monitor for a continued tolerance and change in status. The patients to monitor and have evaluation and goals, the patient's nutrient intake meets over 75% of estimated kilocalorie and protein needs throughout length of stay. And this goal is ongoing. And a new goal was made for the patient to tolerate PO intake again within 48 to 72 hours. The next Follow-up nutrition assessment was on February the 2nd. And at this point, the patient reported that he is able to eat, but he's still eating less than 50% of most of his meals. He does not like the Enchers, but agrees to try the Enchers again for that extra um, protein intake. The patient has poor dentition, his upper teeth are broken, but he states that he can chew okay and he doesn't want to have his food chopped, which at our hospital is considered a mechanical soft diet. So the diet would be, was GI soft, which is different from the mechanical soft in that it's got softer foods, but meat and such does not come chopped up. His estimated calorie needs are still unchanged from previous and his nutritional intake met less than 75% of his calorie and protein needs and an unknown amount of estimated fluid needs. The nutrition diagnosis is malnutrition and a new nutrition diagnosis was given at this point on February the 2nd, saying that the patient has severe acute disease or injury-related malnutrition related to surgical intervention for a perforated appendix, poor PO intake, chewing difficulty, and poor wound healing as evidenced by the medical record nutrition-focused physical exam, poor dentition, and patient interview. The nutrition intervention was included food preferences being noted, 